What's up guys and welcome to Copycat episode 2 where we take a look at other people's artwork and try to think of the process that might have went into creating a piece of their own. And this time we're featuring the Skullman himself, Bill Elise. So what makes his pieces so special? Well, they're always pretty dark even though the images themselves are really bright. We got a lot of gold going on and a lot of heavy material. Of course, don't miss the skulls and the skeletons. Hey, where would we be without bones? His pieces are always very decorated, so let's just see how we could recreate one of our own. So, we start off in Daz again. Bring in the female, bring in the midnight skeleton or any skeleton you want. Make sure that filter by context is unticked at the bottom left corner because we want both the skeleton and the female to have the same pose. Doing so allows you to select the same items for both characters. You may need to adjust the skeleton a little bit, but sometimes it works right off the bat. Bring those into cinema, and then I proceed to delete everything I don't need from both objects. Like the legs, because I know I won't be going below the torso. And I deleted all the eye stuff. Import some of Bill Elise's skulls. The one from his first pack, I believe. Go check that out. The link's in the description. Amazing models with plenty of detail already baked in. What I... Yeah, what I'm doing now is I'm placing both the skeleton and the human shell in a volume builder and then in a volume measure with a fairly decent uh, voxel size so I can bring that into ZBrush in a moment, remesh it. Wouldn't have needed to do it for the skeleton because I'm not touching that into ZBrush so if you know you're just adjusting the shell, that's fine. So you can bring the regular skeleton model into ZBrush as well. Open a regular mesh press import and then opening two other default meshes going import and then append allows you to do multiple subtools in one scene without fiddling around too much and yeah i then proceed to just go ham and zbrush with very basic tools uh, i use the move tool the inflate and the standard brush i believe um by holding down the alt button you can go directional from the camera direction or towards the camera direction or you can just regular move brush it of course it's all symmetrical by pressing the x button uh, that activates symmetry and yeah i'm just pushing and pulling and dragging and drawing so we can have a base a sliver a tiny teeny little remainder or remainder of a human shell that once was Yeah, just here and there, little bits of standard brush and inflate stuff. At one point in this video, I will go back into ZBrush and adjust some things that I did not like. I just now remeshed the body shell again. Yeah, more standard stuff, standard brush stuff, move brush. Now, exporting the shell at least, I think. Yeah, here we go. Now it's on to the horns. Also an amazing pack. You can find the link down in the description. Saves you a lot of time. If you don't have the energy to model horns yourself, who doesn't these days? Um, yeah, play some that I think would work. Now I'm just playing around. You can place those horns by pressing the Q and the W button, just alternating between them you know, so you can adjust the pose like I'm doing right now. Yeah, in the same horn pack, there's of course deformation that you can apply to the base mesh, which makes you have those holes. Now I'm just playing around a little bit more, but I won't be using any of that because the horns at the top are fine. Yeah, just dragging some more, seeing what works and what doesn't, and exporting all of that separately and bringing that then into cinema again. So I can remove all my old stuff, or at least sort it out and put them in a new group. Importing it bit by bit, as you can see. And what I'm going to do now is combine everything, put that into a volume builder with a fairly low mesh size. So we can then bring that into Marvelous Designer for our draping garment. That's fine. It doesn't need to be pixel perfect. We're not animating anything, so... As rough as this is, it works fine for just simulating in Marvelous itself. You can see me do some random shape 
and then adding some curves, adding doing some adjustments, and then unfolding it so it's symmetrical. Oh, yeah, I'm placing a hole for the horn so it can fall through. And it's just a bit more of adjustments from now. Doing the same for the horn in the bag, even though it wasn't really necessary, but it works. And here we go from adjustment to adjustment. I figured the dongles at the forehead weren't working out, so I got rid of them all together. Right there in a second. And yeah, just grabbing and pulling. Now I'm getting rid of the dongles. And I'm probably going, yeah, I'm getting rid of the same dongle at the bottom. So it falls a bit more nicely. Put that into the UV map. So I have a separate texture that I can work on in Photoshop. Put that into Cinema. I exported a thin material because I was going to do the cloth surface in Cinema to add some thickness to it. And now you can see me add some like fabric garment rips, which I won't end up using. I was just trying really roughly to see if it would work out. But I should have spent more time in it to get some like minor uh, distress in there and not something that huge so I ended up not using it in my final product but for now it's staying in. Putting in a random HDRI so we have some basis of light in our scene and now I'm starting to apply some default materials so I can get the colors out of the way see what works what doesn't. More textures shout out Travis Davids again this is all real simple materials all over the place. In the end we have like two mixed materials separated by a dirt node. One for the skeleton and one for the body itself. Now I'm just doing some basic stuff. Travis David's maps into the roughness, into the bump, nothing more. And that just goes on so I can get a feel for the piece itself and for the look that I'm trying to achieve. Always having in mind builds super beautiful renders. And here you can see me just creating a default object that I can radial clone around the scene. I could have went with something pre-made, but alternating between the MT, uh, the MW, and the UL key combinations for extrude, inner extrude, and uh, loop selection, I just do some random basic stuff. Put that into subdivision surface and then into a smoothing object. So I have like some resemblance of, I don't know, a spiky thing that I can clone it was fine enough for me and worked plenty at the end. Yeah, now I'm just pretty much cloning the stuff, seeing what works, playing around with the radial cloner, with the amount, with the transformation, the rotations for all of the three objects I created. As you can see on the right now, it updated and yeah, now I'm just playing around of course, cloner and doing a lot of it is always kind of a bit iffy in cinema, but if you bring the patience with you and make sure that autosave is enabled, kids, always enable autosave because it'll save you some hours of frustration. And yeah, I'm just uh, placing lights now, trying to light the scene really, really basic, nothing too crazy. And here I'm going back into ZBrush because I wasn't feeling some parts of the skin mesh because it was too clunky for me especially around the hands so I made sure that I can I can adjust the mesh in a way that makes it seem like the body shell is kind of emerging or bubbling through the skeleton to give it a bit more of an organic look back in Marvelous just doing some basic eternal lines around the whole object so I can have them split uh, be split into two materials Make sure that I do that for the horns as well, even though it's barely seeable. And then make sure that both of them are in separate UV boxes, so I can have two materials when importing into Cinema, like I do here. One will be gold, the outer rim, and the inside will be dark. Playing around with materials again, here you can see me trying uh, to apply some fabric texture. Travis Davids as well, shout outs. Uh, but normal wasn't working, so I was using the regular bump map and then paired with a basic roughness map for both the gold and the gray on the garment. Made sure that it worked out. Now I'm playing again with the radial cloner a bit, 
which can get iffy to make that look good. Um, maybe it was the forms I created, but I just kept trying around. Now I'm importing a, a marble material for the body shell base. So that's what I wanted to do from the beginning, have a marble base and then have that be separated by a mix material as well. I'll try a bunch of stuff here in a second. I go from marble and mix with black. Now I'm smoothing uh, the skin shell so it gets a bit more smooth because I did not subdivide it again in ZBrush. And you can see me now adjusting the gold material to a bit more refined look to make sure that there's not too much big scratches going on, but also uh, to make sure that it is not too clean. So in the end, I'll have like two mixed materials, one gold with black and the marble with gold, which worked fine, and some random gold materials for the fabric and the backside. Yeah, I'm adjusting lights right now, making them warm, which I will get rid of at the end because it wasn't working out with... Uh, how I was feeling the piece. Yeah, playing around some more, lots of playing around with the cloner. And yeah, here you can see me adjust this body shell material to make sure that it's gold and uh, marbly. More playing around with the cloner. And here I'll put the black material on the skull because too much gold wasn't really... It was a bit too overkill for me. I wanted to get some nice contrast in there because the body shell itself, especially on the inside, was already golden. So I opted for a black look on the skeleton. And at the head, at, at the end, I adjust the head in a way that makes the head gold, but have it be separated by a dirt material with black so the eyes are dark enough. Um, so we don't have that gold reflecting inside the eyes. Now I'm placing two more big lights at the top and at the bottom to shine light on the radial cloner. As you can see, I made them black in the end. And same goes for the skeleton like I just mentioned and the head. So the skeleton is gold black, just like um, the head itself. Adjusting some maps so I can have some nice passes. And there we are in Photoshop. Just basic color correction, punching the contrast, making sure the gold isn't as yellowish, but rather more orange. And yeah, you can see me import some maps, some textures. Pretty basic work, make sure the bloom is there. It's a bit more shiny, sharpen the image, and there we go. That's the final result. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and you can gladly leave a suggestion below in the comment box. If you have any name you can think of, of who you would like uh, to see in a future episode of Copycat. Thank you for sticking around and if you're new to the channel, make sure to check out the old stuff. And hey, you, you know, why don't you subscribe? I'd really appreciate it. So stay tuned for the next one and have a nice ride rendering, whatever it may be. and. Again, make sure that goddamn autosave is ticked on.